Hey, this is The Game, Triple H. You're watching Loudwire. Hey everyone, Graham from Loudwire here, and today I'm joined by the founder of NXT. He's a 14-time world champion, but most importantly, he's a metalhead. And he is Loudwire's pick for the Metal Ambassador of the Decade, Paul Triple H Levesque. Thank you so much, man. Oh, thank you. So Edson. appreciate thank your you. time today. It's an honor uh, to be considered for something like this. Uh, you were the only choice, to <laughs> be honest. You were the only choice. And it's thank because you. of the rise of NXT yeah. over the decade, the monumental rise. So I want to talk a little about NXT uh, and sort of it becoming the underground brand for WWE fans. So uh, let's start out with kind of what NXT used to be because it was a very different show back when it was uh, on, on TV for the first time. Yeah. Uh, so how did you transition it from sort of the, the quirky uh, reality game show to a real wrestling program? Well, the quirky reality game show that was NXT in the beginning uh, was sort of killing uh, <laughs> the the tapings on those days it, it was just it was hard you know by the time it was over fans were like just get it over with already and let the smackdown happen or whatever and we were starting a developmental program here mm -hmm. and i knew that in order to give talent the platform to succeed they needed a show in which to do it on i love the name nxt yeah for me it just resonated it spoke to what the brand could be and i went to vince and said uh hey, i have this Place Full Sail University in Orlando, Florida. I think I could shoot a show there. I believe in it and all this stuff. I, I believe we can make it happen. He uh, asked me to shoot a pilot. I, w I came over here and for uh, almost nothing, uh, just shot a pilot with some talent, f forced some people to come do it that didn't know what they were getting into and, and shot this pilot episode and then went back to him and he was like, wow, it's really good. What do you want to do with it? I said, let me take that NXT brand. The, the pitch and the idea behind it the whole time was to create sort of the underground beginnings of what it would take to be in this industry. Yeah. And not only that, but if you looked at, and, and I'll relate this to music, not because you're here, but because it's how I always relate it, and it's to me what the, the right analogy to fit best is, that if we're on SmackDown, our pop music, they're, they're the most popular, the most commonplace, the casual fan is gonna come and, and, and listen to it and see it and, and do all that stuff. I knew that to be the alternative, we needed to be something different. And I would see these hard rock and metal festivals <clears throat> because I'm a fan. And, um, you know, I knew that the popularity of it was still there. So sure. to be able to transition it back into that vibe, right? This was an opportunity to step back, give you something underground, something more basic, but something that was also more true to the roots of what it was, just just a, a, a wrestling product. Yeah. and. Uh, to do that and to create that aggression and that intensity, you need to create something that has that same vibe. And that's where the music came in. So the, immediately the music connection to me was to go down the harder and heavier road. Yeah. And uh, together with our music department and Leah Lowey, who's you know, such a key component in this, we created uh, at the same time NXT Loud, yes. which was a, kind of like a little sub-brand that would be us. We had the idea of taking young up and coming bands, just like young up and coming wrestlers and giving them this platform that didn't necessarily exist. You know, they weren't getting on the Tonight Show or sure. these other platforms or getting radio play. I feel like there's this massive resurgence yes. of rock and, and metal and whatever you want to call it. You know, I'm a, obviously Lem was a big fan, so but just it's just rock and roll, right? And, yeah. But I love it and there's this resurgence of it and you know I like to think we at least have a little bit of a of a little bit of a push in that of, of making that happen because I think we expose it to a lot of people that normally they, they wouldn't they wouldn't have that exposure to it in, in today's world absolutely and uh, and you've seen where these bands have gone uh, since uh, being partially broken by NXT I remember you know power trip code orange yeah. alien weaponry uh, even like bigger bands like Bring Me the Horizon, all being NXT themes. Can you tell me about how that music is chosen for each takeover event? So, uh, Neil has a really great team. I, I, you know, obviously I listen to a lot of stuff as well, but yeah. he, he has this great team and they're, they're always just on the cutting edge of, you know, what's coming out, who's got something coming out sh short term. Sometimes mm -hmm. we know about their, you know, they have an album coming out six months from now. Here's a sample of what it's, 
gotcha. going to be, you know, you mentioned Code Orange, um, for us to work with Code Orange and then see, see sort of, you know, the, the success they were already having, but see that get, get amplified through us using their music, but then also them playing for us and coming yeah. to take over and playing and playing Alistair to the ring and just having this incredible moment that then took them, I feel like, to an, another level, especially from a performance standpoint. Like yeah. once you see that, like you want to go see them and you want to listen to their music and, you know, n knowing where they went from there and how it expanded for them and then, you know, them becoming sort of intertwined in what we do, becoming friends with Bray Wyatt, like then yeah. recreating his music and, and the, the Fiends theme and, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of collaboration for me is, is awesome. I love it. And, you know, some of my favorite uh, moments in the last few years as we've done takeovers is just uh, getting done rehearsals the night before the show and then going over yeah. to this little pole in the wall studio <laughs> and watching those guys and, and girls w w watching Code Orange rehearse for that show the next day and just yeah. rocking out with them and just getting this little private showing right there it was it was it was awesome. I feel like in some way um, we're like the you know NXT is like the metal version of the Tonight Show in that like we go like hey here's an up and yeah. coming band and we bring them out and they play and and they destroy and yeah. and when you're done you're like holy cow it, I'm like you're checking the internet to see when are they playing near me because I I want to go see them you know exactly uh, and I think you more than anyone understand how uh, bringing a band in can further sort of add, a, add another piece of legitimacy to a talent mm -hmm. because. Obviously, you came out with Motorhead playing you down at WrestleMania. Yeah. You know how important that is. Uh, so was that an influence in getting these bands to start to play these superstars out to the ring? Yeah, look, th there's a certain point, even w with NXT, if, especially if it's a talent you don't know, you want to set the table for them the best way possible for them to succeed. So I feel one of the things that really put Aleister Black over the top as a performer, while he had this badass song, um, Incendiary, uh, the mm -hmm. singer, it, it, you know, does the vocals to it. And while that is one of the f my favorite tracks we've ever done here, um, and it was badass and he had this cool entrance where he rises up and the whole thing, when he did that live with them playing yeah. and, and just that, that energy that they brought to it, it puts him on a whole nother level of stardom. Like, yeah. You, you almost can't help it. If, if somebody is willing to do all of that just for a moment to walk out, like they're, they're a star, that you can't help but feel like they're a star. So I feel like that, that's, they, as much as it helped them, they helped put him over the top as a performer. Yeah. And that's what I feel like the marriage of this thing is here. You know, we've, over the last few years, because of this, we've done uh, Download Festival and all yeah. these metal festivals overseas uh, and in the US. It's um, what we do is so connected to it but the fan base is the same yes. and that connection point of them all coming together and the bands love what we do so like when when we go to like download there's as many bands coming to our show in between their gigs to watch yeah. our performers as there are our performers you know trying to stay over after our show is over so that they can go see uh these bands play and it's that's how we ended up with you know the, the slipknot thing i was a fan right. Uh, for years, Corey Taylor Slipknot was playing at Download. He came to the show. We, we, we included him in the show. He did something with uh, Baron Corbin and Samoa Joe and kind of stayed in touch with him through that. And, you know, now since then, when they came out with uh, We Are Not Your Kind. Yes. For me, I felt like when I, the first time I heard the track, I was like, it's like Corey wrote this for us. Having an underground feel <laughs> from a mainstream company is probably not the easiest thing to do. Uh, I think one of the important pieces of that was having Seth Rollins as the first NXT champion. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think uh, Seth brought to the product in his very early, early stages of development? Well, you know, if you look back at that time, it, it's funny because Raw and SmackDown, now 80% of everybody that's there came out of this. Yeah, absolutely. It came from here, and you mentioned, you know, like um, Seth being the first champion there. Seth was, in, in a way, sort of that underground athlete yeah in, in in a manner of speaking like he was a guy with all the talent but a different look and a different feel and kind of a rebel mentality like to be honest i mean a lot of conversations with seth about like dude we got to change the attitude or you ain't gonna make it you know um mm -hmm. but 
it was all for the right reasons. We laugh about it now, right? All for the right reasons, but it spoke to what the brand was sure. because he was underground, because he was fighting the system, so to speak. And you mentioned it being difficult. Yeah, it's it's hard to make. Uh, it's hard to make the underground indie film when you go, but aren't you backed by Disney? Like, right. you know what I mean? Like, sure. we're, we're, it's the WWE. And it's one of the things that we've always been sort of cautious of is put enough production value into it that it feels professional and it feels real. You don't feel yeah. like, ooh, this is cheesy. And if my friends see me watching this, I kind of feel, <laughs> you know, like no matter how underground a band is, you want to know they can at least play their instruments and, yeah. and produce good music and, and that the guy, hey, this guy can sing or whatever, you know. It's a part of the quality thing. Um, you you want to know all that and feel all that and and have it be a part of it, but at the same time, you don't want to feel like you're getting a CGI special yeah. effects laid in yeah. Pro Tool sure. album, right? Like where yeah. it's where it's all perfect and it's all fixed and it's all just you know uh, it, too perfect is wrong mm -hmm. yes. for this metal and and rock and roll it's supposed to be imperfect it's supposed to be emotion emotion's not perfect right like if you yes. think about it mentally you make it perfect if you do it with emotion you just say it and do it and it's not perfect but that's the beauty yeah um and that's what we try to maintain with all of this is and and i think seth brought that to the table it was this emotion and this purity but it wasn't perfect growing up watching ron smackdown my whole life uh when nxt comes like you said, like you want your friends to catch you watching that show. Yeah. Because it feels like my brand. And of course, the music is part of that. Uh, another really great entrance was with Kane Hill and Lizzie Hale playing yes. out Ember Moon. Can you tell me about pairing uh, that performer with those musicians? It's a funny thing. Like for Code Orange to play Alistair right, it was, it, it was right. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to try it on. You just like Code Orange, Alistair Black. Right, like, yeah. yep. <laughs> um, Ember was a bit different, because mm -hmm. the music is a bit different, she's a bit different. You needed to have the right vocal track with it. It couldn't just be, you know, oh, hey, we just get some singer to do this, sure. you know. So um, the mix needed to be right, and, and um, that, there was a, a few different ideas that were thrown around, but when, you know, when Lizzie's name came up, it was like, perfect. You know, that's, that, that's the fit. Um, she just has a unique voice and a, and a sound and an energy. Um, you know, they, they've been a blast to work with, and we've yeah. we've done multiple things. Uh, she and uh, Nita Strauss played the opening of Nita's Evolution. Nita's great too. Yeah, yeah. we we sort of kind of try to work with them of like, just kind of do what you do. Yeah. Not like we're not trying to produce you. We're not trying to say like, well, just stay in the spot because we need to shoot you. Like cut loose and, and yeah. it's almost they're they're trying it's a big opportunity for them is a lot of times they're trying to be very like uber professional they don't want to <laughs> overstep bounds and things and we're like sure. hey cut loose the crazier you are the better this is and um so it's fun to see them have i think that that freedom mm. to do things in in our environment where maybe even if they were to get a gig on the tonight show they would be very much like hey you need to stay in these lines and and it's probably true right yeah. mm -hmm. whereas with us we can, we can let them, we can let them go to town and, and just kind of do what they do, and that's the magic of what it is. I think is is letting them be. We do it with the talent, but we also do it with the artists and letting them be what they are. And um, that's uh, you know the 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 K Neil thing with it's another example of it when it just works, it works. Yeah, it was so good. And uh, speaking of crazy and cutting loose, let's talk about Poppy yeah. because <laughs> that was an amazing entrance, and especially with NXT now being on the USA Network. Uh, putting her on TV with Io Shirai coming out, uh, just a wild entrance. Again, yeah. the perfect marriage of talent. Yeah. Can you tell me about putting that together? Uh, when he first sent me the Poppy thing, I, I, I think there was a like a little disclaimer on there. Well, this one's a bit different. Not sure if this fits, but it's cool and crazy, and I loved it. The Poppy thing was perfect of the the sweet syrupy pop tune that blows up into this yeah. ultra aggressive. Uh, you know, violent, for lack of a better term, song. Very creepy, too. Yeah, and Very it just creepy. fit perfect for the EO yeah. thing. We did a music video with it, and then, you know, there, there are certain things that just work at the right time. She was in Miami. They were about to go overseas, but they had a moment in time where they could perform for us, and we were just able to work it out. Things happen for a reason, you know, sure. and, and that was a blast to do. 
This whole thing to me is about creating the future. And so when you walk through the Performance Center and you see these young kids, it's, it's hard. It's like the fountain of youth. It's hard yeah. not to walk through here and see kids with a dream and they're just grinding, right? Mm -hmm. Every day. It's not about the money. It's not about anything. It's just about doing what they love to do here from a performance standpoint and giving them the platform to do it and let them live their dream. People like Lizzie, if, man, if she reached out to me and said, hey, uh, we have a new album coming out. Would you, would you plug this for me? It's just whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like yeah. that, I would do it, you know? Yeah. She's, she's awesome in every way. Yeah. Uh, so with uh, NXT's transition into moving on to the USA Network, uh, being in prime time now, uh, can you tell me about the challenges of, again, maintaining that sort of underground feel when there's a brighter spotlight on NXT than ever? How do you go from underground to we just signed with a huge label, mm -hmm. we're the biggest act in the world and we're doing stadiums. Yeah. How do we stay true to who we are? It's tough. Um, but I also think that we're just nicking the surface of this. And mm -hmm. I, I do feel like it's, it's a funny thing that like people put things in buckets um, of where music should sit or this is a kind of music that's mainstream. This is and all those things. It's either good or it's not. Yeah. You know, um, Lem had said that to me a million times. Is he, there's two kinds of music. Is, people say rock and roll, metal, all these things. Two kinds of music. Good music you want to listen to and terrible music you don't want to listen to, right? And that's what it is. And to me, this is either product you want to watch or product you don't. Um, you want to make it good, but you want to keep it true to what it is. As this expands and grows, there's room for all of it because there's as many people like hard rock and metal and that underground vibe. There's as many people that are connected to that. Youth is always going to be in some way about rebellion and and it's it's staying young, right? When you get to be 50, maybe you don't want to hear about it and you have to wear a suit, no <laughs> tie, so you seem edgy. But uh, you know, you you. you you look at things differently and the world differently, maybe, maybe not, not everybody does, but keeping that where it's, where it's um, that youthful rebellion and that youthful, like, don't tell me how to be. Yeah. And, that, and that's really what this is all about. It's, it's anti and um, my goal now is to, to try to make NXT not only, you know, we say USA, but I want, I want it to be a global product that's seen everywhere. But also we have sub brands of this and I don't even want to say they're sub brands, but like NXT UK. Right. You know, we've done the same thing there. We've worked with bands in the UK, the, the, the same format and the same thing. I try to find local bands. I try to find, you know, mm. we, if we do a takeover in Cardiff, I try to find something that's localized to there, um, something that speaks to what's happening there yeah. um, and has a, has a distinct UK feel to it. We'll do that globally, you know. I, I can't wait when we go to Japan so I can work with Baby Metal again. And, oh, uh, that you would know. be great. <laughs> I can't wait for that yeah. too. Yeah, yeah.